fundraising since 1989, and I can tell you more about my story of how the first 10 years I didn't have a proper training in fundraising. It was only in 1999 after my training in the U.S. that I really learned that fundraising is also a science. Anyway, uh, let me at the same time introduce myself to you. I was a born-again Christian, 1983, and uh, I have been attending the same church since because it's a church that started in my mother's home. My pastor is my brother, so it's like a family church. I have cousins, brothers, nephews, nieces, so I really look forward to Sundays because that's the time I see everybody and our neighbors. And I came to ATF after 10 years in the corporate world. Like I told you, I got born again in 1983 to a Reformed Baptist church. And uh, I just wanted to take up a course on Roman Catholic Magisterium because I come from a Catholic background and uh, I wanted to witness to my Catholic friends, and there was a priest, a uh, former priest from Vatican, from Italy, who is teaching Roman Catholic Magisterium at ATS. His name is Anthony Pezzotta. He was sent by Vatican in order to make uh, the Philippines 100% Catholic because we're only 87% Catholic. So he went to live in Santa Cruz, Laguna, uh, talked with the pastors there, and engage the people and in the process he was the one who was converted to evangelical christianity and so we invited him here at ats to teach uh, roman catholic magisterium and i did not uh, leave ats since then <laughs> since 1984 i finished my ma in christian education and then i proceeded to master of divinity in christian education and when I graduated, uh, ATS took me in as a staff because my uh, training uh, is in communication. I have an AB journalism degree from the University of the Philippines. At that time, there was no communication department, no public relations department. So I started doing that for ATS. No? I was uh, taking care of marketing, communication, fundraising events, database. I was like a one-woman shop for 10 years doing everything that you're doing now in fundraising, marketing, creatives, communication. And then uh, in 1995, I took a sabbatical leave because a staff at ATS is allowed to do a sabbatical leave after serving ATS for seven years. Uh, and I'm a person who tries to reinvent herself every seven years. I think that's the reason of my staying power at ATS. I've had several uh, jobs at ATS since 1989. So I wanted to further hone my skills in public relations. And I looked everywhere. There's no MA in public relations because I already have uh, two MAs from ATS. So I don't need to go to a bachelor's program. And so I went to the States to get my uh, uh, MA in Public Relations. Actually, it's an MA in Journalism, major in Public Relations. And my uh, cognate is Fundraising and Business Administration. And, you know, when uh, you are praying to the Lord to define who you are, what your mission is, He will not only answer you. He will not just define your mission. He will refine it. And there, I found that my mission is not just being a fundraiser because in Virginia Beach where I went to Regent University for my third MA uh, I got my second conversion my second conversion was in stewardship the son of Pat Robertson who was the founder of Christian Broadcasting Network uh, Rob Gordon Robertson uh, knew I was the fundraiser for ATS because he stayed here in the Philippines I think five years started the CBN Asia, 700 Club Asia. And he said, Zenith, whose money are you fundraising? Isn't it all God's money? Doesn't everything belong to the Lord? And you know, that simple question, that simple encounter with Gordon Robertson really made me think, made me reflect. And that brought about a deep change 
in the way I viewed fundraising, the way I viewed my life, my work. And since then, uh, it was life-changing for me to understand that everything belongs to God and that we're only managers and stewards. And so, raising money uh, should not be an embarrassing act Unlike what some people say that fundraising is begging for money, fundraising really is uh, going around, seeing people that the Lord has already touched, and because it's the Lord who mobilizes resources, because He's the owner. If He's the owner, He is the provider. And if, if we understand the truth, it has tremendous implications in the way we, we view fundraising, in the way we do fundraising, and even in the way we approach our life, that everything is a trust from the Lord. It's not mine, it's God's. So I let you read the article by Henry Nowen on the Ministry of Fundraising. Make the long story short, I came back to ATS in 99 to start the local fundraising department. We called it the Communication and Development Department. And my job uh, uh, was particularly, I was particularly tasked to reverse the 70-30 ratio of uh, uh, funding because, you know, ATS was started by American missionaries and most of our funding comes from foreign or international support. And by the time in 1999, it was 70% foreign and only 30% local. And my particular task was to reverse that into 70% local and 30% foreign. So now, I'm happy to report that almost 90% of our operating expenses or annual budget is raised locally. And we still continue to get grants and support from our international partners, but for use for capital expense, such as uh, faculty development, uh, because we send our faculty to obtain their PhD abroad, uh, capital expenses used for building, for facilities, for computerization of the library, and so forth. But our uh, local or current program is uh, almost fully supported by local donors. And how we did that, maybe I can tell you that story as we go along our uh, class today and uh, week after next, I will also be uh, teaching the module on how to set up the annual fund giving program so that the annual fund giving program will support your operating expenses or your annual budget. That will be on August uh, August 20, no? August 20. So there, yung, my story of fundraising. When I came back from the U.S., I started calling up the other seminaries to look for the other development directors because I'm a natural networker. I all, I all, I'm a people person. I, I like to network. And lo and behold, I didn't find anybody with that same position. Maybe I found one or two people who are called uh, promotions coordinator, but no development director, no communication director. So that, the Lord put a burden in my heart to start uh, the Christian Stewardship Association. The Christian Stewardship Association uh, is a network of Christian fundraisers our mission is to mobilize God's resources for God's ministries, for God's work. And our vision is to see the Philippine church not lacking anything because people freely give and share. Isn't it nice to see the churches, the Christ-centered organizations, mission groups, not lacking anything in terms of resources because people just freely give and share. And I think it's Horace. Bushnell, who said that when we get that stewardship uh, revolution, then that is the finale. That is when the Lord will already come, when we have the stewardship revolution. So that conversion, second conversion I had in 95, was really life-changing for me. And since that time, 
the Lord has been teaching me more things about being a good steward. And uh, in 95, I crafted, not crafted, I, I worded the personal mission that the Lord gave me. That is to worship Him, to serve Him in, uh, by teaching biblical stewardship education. So I no longer teach how to raise money. I will not teach you how to raise dollars or pesos, but I will teach you how to raise stewards who are rich towards God. Because when you, when you raise stewards, they take along with them their pocketbooks. No? Because if you keep raising money, you get burned out. In the U.S., the burnout, the average burnout of a fundraiser is three years. After that, they quit, they get burned out. Kasi it's all tactics, it's all uh, methods, it's all transactions. Uh, there's what you call transactional fundraising, but what we want to teach you is transformational fundraising. How to raise stewards, how to raise giving hearts, how to raise uh, generous givers who are rich towards God. And that is where the image of a sower will come in. We plant seeds of God's truth. We plant seeds of uh, what the Bible teaches about giving, about uh, being a steward, about generosity. And we try to help people uh, in this journey because you and I are in this journey together. We are born, we die, but everything else in between is a journey of stewardship. It's like discipleship. It's growing in to the uh, likeness and image of Jesus Christ and knowing God more, uh, experiencing more of His uh, goodness, of who He is, and so it's really not so much at the end of the day, we will not be judged by what we have produced, but by our fruitfulness. How much we have, uh, uh, the fruit that we bore in, in terms of the fruit of the Spirit, love, peace, joy, goodness, kindness, patience, and all of this good stuff that uh, we need to have in our own selves because we cannot be sowers, Mike, if we don't have enough seeds to sow. So we need to grow as a fundraiser. We need to grow so that our seed bags are always full. We always have things to bring about, to scatter in the hearts of people that uh, God puts in our midst. So in 2000, 2003, Oh, by the way, I quit from ATS in 2001 because I got impatient. You know, I was trained in fundraising in the U.S. I already know how to do fundraising the professional way and the Christian stewardship way. And I felt like I was still pushing everybody and pulling even the board and the leaders. And I quit. I said, I will not serve ATS anymore, but I will try to be a consultant to as many so I tried to uh, uh, grow the Christian Stewardship Association, but that was the lowest point in my life when I quit ATS. And I learned a lot from that brokenness, being away from where you are really called by God. And so in 2003, when after two years of ATS looking for a director for the MBA in Biblical Stewardship, because they were looking at the missionaries and uh, other scholars and one of the board members then a new board member uh, bishop cesar punsalan he told the uh, then president uh, isabello magalit oh but you're looking at the wrong people <laughs> you need to find uh, somebody from the corporate world who understands uh, business to organize an mba for you so he went to bj sebastian B.J. Sebastian is the Senior Vice President of uh, uh, Gokong Wei, J.G. Summit. And he's the Chief Financial Officer and the Corporate Planner for the 32-plus Gokong Wei companies. And he's also a pastor and very much a faithful steward of God. So uh, Bishop Cesar, who was board member of ATS, took B.J. Sebastian to be the MBA director to develop the curriculum because he's an MBA himself, 
But BJ said, but I cannot be a full-time faculty because I have work at JG Summit and I'm also a full-time pastor in Paranaque. So let's get Zenet Maramara. She will be our operations uh, director. So the three of us, BJ, Bishop Cesar, and myself, started to the MBA and we offered it in 2004. And since then, we've been helping equip leaders of NGOs, uh, pastors who have admin, administrative work to uh, help them become more effective stewards and managers of where they are. Because in the MBA, we blend uh, corporate disciplines with biblical uh, wisdom. And now, we're ready to offer it online so that we can, uh, it can be more accessible to more people globally. Thank you.